all right, is that the church begins to downplay the specific the specific call and provocation of the gospel as something that should engender in our lives a kind of crisis. In some ways, ever what I say in various places is that the modern modern liberalism is, is it, we we live we live in a society in which yeah there's a crisis a spiritual crisis but the nature of the spiritual crisis is precisely its denial of the importance of crisis that there's no such thing as a religious crisis that's a, hmm. that's part of the illusion that's part, stop getting so upset about religion stop getting so upset about God there's no provocation here there's no need for conversion just keep on going to Walmart please take the shot. All right, keep going to Walmart. Do what we're telling you to do from the state. Leave us alone. All right, so what Balthazar comes along and says, no, this misses, this misses the point of Christianity. From the get-go, the statement, Jesus is Lord, is a political statement. It's a cultural statement. Because Romans, of course, would claim that Caesar is Lord and only Lord. So, you know, along, amongst various gods, but socially, Caesar is Lord. So the claim, right from the get-go, from the Christian, is politically dangerous, is socially dangerous. It was subversive. Christianity was subversive and prophetic. And, and Romans responded to this. Average Roman people converted and then eventually convert the entire empire precisely because the gospel presented a social alternative. That was a provocation that told people, your eternal soul demands a crisis decision right now. Now, Balthazar says that in every single one of our lives as a Christian, we're going to reach what's called an Ernstfall moment. It's a German word, Ernstfall. That means a decision that you must make, a decision that is forced upon you, that has deep existential significance for your entire life, and that you cannot avoid making the decision, that not to make a decision is a decision, that the default position is simply back away from the crisis and say, there's no crisis, I don't have to decide, is itself a decision. It's, it, it, uh, I'm reminded of the famous phrase from Yogi Berra, when you come to a fork in the road, take it. Uh, you know, and, and this is what Balthazar is saying, you're going to come to a fork in the road and you have to <coughs> take one, one, one way or the other. There's no backing off of the fork in the road. All right, and so that's what he means by an Ernstfall moment. And modern Christians try to live as if we don't, we're, none of us are going to be presented with martyrdom. A white martyrdom, red martyrdom, none of us are going to be presented with a prophetic moment, an Ernstfall moment, a crisis moment. And yet that's exactly what the gospel demands. If you have not had an Ernstfall moment in your life, you're not living the Christian life, period, end of discussion. And that would be Bernanos's point of view as well. Excellent. Excellent. So, all right. So Balthazar identifies this Ernstfall as something that we all must wrestle with. But then, okay, once you're there, uh, he seems to say in his book that you you can get to a certain point, and stop me if this is a, a tangent, uh, because again, I read it very quickly and I'm not sure I understand. Uh, so uh, he, he seems to say in his book that once you're there and then you re-embrace or, or very intentionally embrace the faith, then you're in a position to walk with others who haven't yet reached this, this crisis moment, who yeah. don't know that there is a crisis moment. And it, it, it almost sounded like uh, at a certain point, I forget which section, that he was saying that you can behave as if you're not a Christian because you know ultimately that you are one. I, I, am I mischaracterizing here? No, you're not. This is something that I've written about too, uh, based on that and some things that Guardini has written. He's not talking here about hiding your faith. That's, that's not his point. Uh, what he's talking about here is that once you have gone through the cauldron of, of spiritual suffering and questioning, once you've gone through the fires, the purgative fires of real conversion, to the truth of Christ and the Ernstfall moment where you've had to make a decision. It doesn't mean that suddenly now it's all rainbows and unicorn pixie dust. Uh, you know, it, it, it's, oh, we've left all that horribleness behind. It is remembered, okay? The lamb who was slain, that you, that, you know, John's vision of the book of Revelation retains his wounds. He retains his image as a slain one. The risen Christ still has the wounds of the crucifixion. We leave nothing behind us. So what I like to say is that once we convert from unbelief to belief, it's now that 
it's not that now we forget the unbelief. It's it's in reality, it's in some sense, completed unbelief, transformed, redeemed unbelief. So our belief is redeemed unbelief. And, and therefore, we have still the capacity to empathetically enter into the unbelief of those who have not undergone their Ansfold moment, to enter into their apathy, into their indifference, into their almost bitterness towards the question of God, because we were there too. We were there too. And, and so we can empathize with it. And we can even walk with them in a way where we're not bludgeoning them over the head with Christian truth constantly. That's what he means by you can live in, in some sense, just like other people live to a point, to a point until the crisis emerges, you have to make a decision. Mm -hmm. So what Guardini says, and Balthazar would agree, is that essentially what you're doing, you're not forgetting your faith, you're not hiding your faith. You are bracketing your faith. Your faith is so deep, so profound, so part of you, so constitutive of who you are, that you are not personally threatened or challenged by unbelief anymore. You have transformed unbelief within you, but you know the reasons for why your Redeemer lives. And therefore, it's possible for you to bracket that faith in an act of charitable kenosis or descent into the malaise of the other. You bracket your faith and set it aside in order to enter once again into the dark labyrinth of unbelief of your yes. neighbor in order to bring them out. Okay, but that I'm, bracketed faith remains, remains in the background. Anyway, go ahead. I, well, no, I'm, I'm glad you you phrase it in that way because now that, that reminds me of a passage that I read just last night uh, where citing Romans 9, uh, von Balthasar says something like, uh, it can even get to the point <laughs> where in walking with your brother, uh, if it happened that it was either he or you who could enter the kingdom of God, you would take the model of St. Paul and prefer that your brother go, prefer yeah. to be forsaken for the sake of his uh, yeah. salvation. And that that uh, that dynamic requires a very robust theology of Holy Saturday. So uh, that just gave me a question, if you don't mind. Yeah. Oh, no, go ahead. What is von Balthasar's position, or what, what is his perspective on uh, the dynamic of the, the true Holy Saturday, Christ's descent, uh, the harrowing of hell, sometimes it's called. You yeah, know, we, we profess it in the creed. Um, I'm not sure a lot of folks really understand it, but maybe you can say some things about well, that. Well, I think it's probably the most controversial thing that Balthasar has written about uh, because it doesn't just involve Holy Saturday. Ladies and gents, the preview is over. To watch the full video, go to canon211.locals.com and become a member, become a supporter, get access to exclusive content, stay in touch with the Canon 211 community. Well, that's it for today. Never give up. Keep on smiling and memento mori. Cheers. <laughs>